Hi friends, I'm Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. We are going to do our fourth weekly garden tour. It is looking so full and I'm really excited to show you what we have going on this week. So let's get started. Tell you everything I've seen. Basil's my garden sidekick. Hi. <laughs> Fair warning, I am so wiped and easily exhausted. So if I seem out of breath or exasperated, it's because I'm 20 weeks pregnant. And it takes a lot out of you. But I am so happy to say the garden still looks beautiful, even though I've been pregnant pretty much the entire time. We've been gardening this year and I'm really proud of what we've accomplished. It's just been, it's been amazing to see the progress we've made because I really wasn't sure how it will go this year. I'm super struggling to know where to start. So I guess I'm gonna start over on the trellises, which I planted a bunch of last night. So we've got six arch trellises made out of these cattle panels here. And normally I direct seed everything on the trellises, like my cucurbits and my beans. But this year, slug issues, which we know how to tackle. It's just our population was so out of control. Nothing was really very effective immediately. So what ended up happening is all of our seeds died. I've explained it a million times. It, it sucked, it was the worst. But um, I came up with a, a solution where I planted things in some <sighs> slugs. Sorry, I just get so annoyed. I see them on my plants and ugh, so annoyed with them. Yeah. Not cool, mister. This guy's going to the chickens. I'm definitely not a huge proponent of just like killing little creatures, even, even garden pests, but just letting nature take care of it by just feeding them the chickens. If the chickens were in the garden, they would be taking care of it themselves, but they would also eat all the plants. So I can't do that. So I'm just gonna feed this guy to the chickens. See how long it takes for them to find it. Do you already get it? Cause that was really fast. Okay, so we'll start with this trellis right here. I've got sugar pie pumpkin on this side. And then over here I have sugar pie, a buttercup squash, and more sugar pie. Hi Basil. This one is all butternut. It's a Waltham butternut squash, a medium sized squash. And on this side I think I have two Walthams and a butter cup. Over here, these pole beans actually survive the slugs and they're quite tall the way up here now, as you can see. However, this side of the trellis did not survive for some reason. So I did plant a couple, a couple starts in here that I started in these little fabric grow bags. Oh, look at that. Look at that, just covered and slugs. Sorry, I was distracted by slugs. Chris is gonna work on tackling that for me while I show you guys the garden. So over here, trellis number four, we have Sibley squash, more Sibley. And this is a Jarredale squash, which is actually my favorite kind of squash. On this trellis, we have honey nut, which has been much slower to grow for me than any of my other squash, so you can see these are started at the same time as the other ones I'm showing you and they're just still really small. So we've got honey nut. This is my one surviving honey nut from the slug damage. Everything else is a little transplant. That guy I'm protecting with a pot. And then over here we have Jarredale. So I've got Jarredale, I think, although it looks super small. Jarredale, Jarredale, and then my one surviving Jarredale, which as you can see is so much bigger because this one direct seeded. And look, perfectly sized slug hole. It's like literally the shape of a slug. So ridiculous. So ridiculous, guys. Now let's go over and take a look at the garlic. I have to harvest more scapes from a smaller garlic that for some reason just didn't grow as large as my other variety. Before I show you guys the garlic, I'm gonna show you this area right here. 
that I have in front of my garlic, which is doing lovely. Oh, tomatoes, I really need to, to uh, prune back and tie up my tomatoes. Okay, let's show you what's going on here. Okay, so this area is currently empty. I need to come in and just weed the few little grass weeds there. And I'm planting three cuca melons. Well, there's actually six. Three pots, six plants of cuca melons right here. So they'll, they'll get trellised up here. And then I have some zucchini plants that just came up. Beets. These guys I direct seeded just last week. Coming up. Some more beets. This bed was kind of spotty germination. I think I need to come in and fill it in a little more. And then some more zucchini. Back here is my jungle of brassicas. These are the broccoli, you can tell, because they have like the um, more frills in their leaves. And then cauliflower is over there. Their leaves are a little bit rounder, a little less frilly. So I have some little broccoli heads beginning to form. It's a good little head that's forming here. I'll have to pick this soon. It's super small, but it is already bolting, which is okay. I'm okay with that. I still enjoy the little baby heads. Another slug. They won't really harm these plants at this size, but I still like to flick them off at least, make them have to work for it again. And I'm really not seeing any cauliflower heads, so I'm not sure what's going on there. No heads yet. We'll just wait and see what happens. How much do you need to apply? Then I have these straggler tomatoes that I need to tie up to the trellis and prune. So I think I have three or four. We've got lots of little fruit. Tomatoes, tomatoes. And then we have some lovely tomatillos. I've got four tomatillos. We've got lots of fruit forming on them. They're, they're so cool. My soft neck garlic is all doing really well. I've got some big weeds coming up in here that we'll have to dig out, mostly large dandelions and then I think some plantain and dandelion city over here but we'll wait until we pull the garlic out so some nice soft neck garlic in this area right here and then I have hard neck that I pulled the scapes off from these guys are looking really good I think I want to go in and apply another round of BT to the garlic since it's been like two weeks since I did and to effectively eradicate leek moth I imagine you want to do at least two applications so I'm gonna do another application of BT hopefully this week okay so we've got some scapes over here this garlic was a different hardneck garlic variety and it's just smaller I don't know why this the conditions are the same it's just a variety thing so it must just be a smaller variety but let me show you what they look like so they're still looking good. Still got some pretty good neck size, but just much smaller than, than those plants over there. And this is just an insane plantain plant. I mean, there's just a couple of really insane ones that we need to pull out. You need to dig them, and I don't want to disturb the garlic right now. To put it all straight before this night turns into day, and then I'm on my way. Lots of garlic scapes in here, folks. I only harvested these ones and half of these ones. I still have to get the other side, but I'm gonna do the rest of the garden tour first. Let's talk about those brassicas over there. In previous videos, I think I mentioned that we probably wouldn't have brassicas this year because it got so warm so fast, but I am noticing this one variety that I planted from Johnny Seeds are producing larger heads than the other variety, despite the heat. So I'm really excited about that. So this is actually a pretty good size one. I mean, for me, that's pretty, pretty good. It's still growing, so I'm gonna let it grow a little bit more. We have this one in here that just started growing. There's a tiny little baby one in there. So yeah, some broccoli after all. And then I think these are Brussels sprouts. This is for sure a Brussels sprout. You can see the long stalk that's forming. You can even see the little baby brussels. But this one, 
I'm not sure about. It's just this like bulb. I'm also going to be harvesting our first, first kohlrabi any day now. See right there? So I need to come in here and harvest this guy soon. He's actually really lovely. I have another little small one right there. I did top off all my onions today so that they would grow roots instead of more greens. They're looking really nice so far this year. And I have a lot of fava beans to harvest. Like, like this guy in here. It's a nice fava bean right there. Let me pick some of those. I made an old man. I said, tell me your story. He took out an old pen. something for me Then he kept walking on down the road And I watched him disappear like smoke and I So I realized that yesterday there was a big segment that was not recorded. So throwing that in here real quick. It is the next day. It is so hot out. It's gonna be like 80 degrees, sunny. And I came out here to plant just a few zucchini plants. And I wanted to show you guys how amazing the soil is. Okay, so take a look at this soil. First of all, squirmy wormy, but so loose. So healthy. So that's all just from no-till and from good mulching practices, as you can see right here. I said, son, when you grow up, you'll be fine. I know you've got questions on your mind. Life is gonna okay, it's time to show you guys the artichokes, because Still looking lovely. Also, this beautiful nasturtium plant is so pretty right now. Just getting a touch of a reprieve because the sun is behind the clouds. So I'll just go around the garden and show you guys some things. And I'm also going to harvest kohlrabi, broccoli, yeah, that's it. Kohlrabi and broccoli I'm gonna harvest and I'll show you guys those beautiful things. So these are the best determinate tomatoes I've had. It's a variety called Glacier, and they're just the healthiest, largest plants. In the past, they've been smaller, and they haven't really grown much. These plants are just continuing to grow, send off more blossoms, send off more fruit. So we should have Glacier tomatoes really soon. They're my earliest producing tomatoes. And then some really pretty ground cherries back here. So corn, the first year I've had corn, it's knee high almost, and we're not even in July. So that's pretty cool. I've never had that before. And my corn is looking just as good as like the farmer's corn, if not better. Normally it's like way smaller and way more pathetic. My Brussels sprouts, which were too closely planted, but don't seem to be struggling by it. See if there are any baby sprouts forming. 
No sprouts yet, but that's normal. I normally don't get sprouts until like late summer, early fall. So, and I, it's better that they don't produce until fall because then they'll be sweeter and more delicious. And then we have potatoes. Lots of potatoes, lots of blossoms. These guys are healthy potato plants. Peppers are beautiful. They have been loving the heat, loving the, the sun. Tomatoes, super happy. There's lots of fruit on here. These beautiful little tomatoes in here and just fruit on all of these plants that you can finally see now that I pruned them. These are the ones that I pruned. And I finally uncovered my eggplant in last week's video, then realized we already had flea beetles. So they found the eggplant super, super fast. But the eggplant are fine. They're large enough, they can withstand, and they're shooting off lots of blossoms almost every year. And I just never had success. This year, we should have a lot of eggplant and It'd be like some vegan eggplant parm or I don't know. I'll have to come up with some fun ways to do eggplant. Cucumber TP, we finally tied up. Cucumbers are all sprouted in their little bottomless pots. Okra, finally growing. These cabbages I thought were total goners because the slugs got to them when they were really small, but cabbage never ceased to surprise me. Last year, I thought all my cabbage died and I still ended up with cabbage. This year, I thought all my cabbage died and I quickly realized they did not. And they're, they're already lovely. I've got this this purple variety in here. Um, I'm blanking on the name right now, but I'll, I'll post it in the text. And then a green variety, some yellow onions that are doing well. And these are all beets. They've got beautiful greens. I can start picking the beet greens. Okay, the herb garden is full. I don't know what else to say. It's just super full. Yarrow, winter savory, lavenders, lemon balm, bee balm chamomile, echinacea, sorrel, just lots of things that are very full and things are flowering and looking lovely. Watermelon are looking fantastic. They should have blossoms really soon. This is another, the best year I've had with watermelon so far. Onions, these are all red onions. I topped them off today so they focus energy on their roots, their bulbs, and they're, they're gonna be ready sooner than I anticipated. Mm. These guys, are just loving life. These are cantaloupe, melon, sweet potatoes here and there. They're doing great. They're starting to <laughs> starting to trail, which is good. Beans, these are dry bush beans, soybeans, and uh, green bush beans. Biggest priority in this area, biggest issue is weeds, which we don't really have that much of in the rest of the garden, but this is like native soil for the first time being used to plant in. So a lot of those weed seeds are at the surface and we can see them, <laughs> a lot of them. It never rains in California. Really running out of light. Cuckoo culture bed doing great, still have some slug issues here, but I planted summer squash in here. Um, they're doing really well. There's a winter squash over there, oh, slugs. And then this side of the bed is fuller. We have cabbage and flowers and a beet, I think, or chard, something that we've been eating. These really pretty onions that um, were super small last year, but I just let them go to flower because they're so pretty and the pollinators like them. And our calendula is finally blooming. It's so beautiful. You're so damn cold. It never rains in California. The sun is always shining right. 